And the one thing, on behalf of all three of us, me, Lucy, and Paul, if we can turn at anything like that, then it will be very happy. As a lot of you know, Paul is not a huge drinker, so while we're on the stag, stag we're getting in Leeds, as informed by my father, it's the best man's duty to keep an eye on the kid and look after him at all times. Why did he tell you that? <laughs> the first day and night, I managed to keep him in life, and get him back to the room in good order. When I say good, in good order, I mean paralytic. I delegated responsibility to Jacob, who took him over for the last bar, where he promptly lost his key and fell asleep outside his room. The time was messy, the next night made the first night look like a children's party. We started the evening with Paul in fancy dress. But following the afternoon stream then in the sun by the canal, he wanted the best state to white drink. To his credit, he soldiered on, even a point of point water every other drink, he couldn't repair the damage already done. At some time during the night we started to get concerned, because I couldn't, couldn't find him and no one knew where he'd gone. I was so concerned, I managed to find a lovely blonde to come back to my hotel room. <laughs> to help find my brother, obviously. <laughs> On the way to my room, I asked the manager at the rather imposing Craig Class reception if I'd have a key in my brother's room, because I couldn't find him and was worried for his welfare. The manager then asked me, Your brother? He's not the half dressed humble lump with a camarogi podium through the doors into the wedding party. <laughs> I'm truly honoured to be Paul's best man. When he first asked me, I thought he was a liar. Do you agree? For most of our children, I've been that annoying little brother from hell, as I'm sure Lucy and Paul would agree. The brother would not stop pranking, teasing, and whining both of them up. As soon as I realised Paul was serious, I realised the importance of the task, which is right here, right now, the speech. Do I carry on being that annoying little brother mentioning all the embarrassing stories, and have a bit more, or do I take the high road? And only mentioned the good points. I tell you, there's been a few dark days trying to work out what to do, what to say, <laughs> and what not to say. <laughs> so I've decided to tell you to make my poor slip on each party. Can you ask? At the time, I was about 10, which makes Paul 30. I was sat in the room with the family while Paul was hitting his friends. We heard Paul come through the front door. <laughs> <laughs> we heard Paul come through the front door. He didn't come in to see us. It was pretty strange. You know? Yeah. He always used to come up for a quick word before he creeped back up into his cave in the alley. <laughs> I got up to see him. As I went out to the landing, I could see Paul crouch behind the stairs, embarrassing me. Paul, 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 in his serious voice, ordered me, "Get back in the room. Get mum." <laughs> As I walked off, he started to call, Mum, Mum, hurry up, come upstairs. So me being a nosy brother, didn't want to miss out on some action, so he was trying to get involved and listen to what was going on. I crept up the stairs, making the least noise as possible, and see my mum help my brother into a bar, with a strong smell of TCP in here. As I, as I carried on doing my detective work, I finally found out that Paul had been locked in the future park, tried to climb over the, the raw iron gates, slipped and impaled his bum on the spike. <laughs> If that wasn't bad enough, he then had to lift himself off the spike, drag himself home, and ask my mum to check his woman. <laughs> he blessed the pole for weeks to show me the damage, but he still hasn't shown me to this day. I'm sure if we play enough drinking with tonight, he'd be able to show us. <laughs> it was said Admiral Nelson lived at 111 Trafalgar Square. He had one eye, one arm, and one arsehole. <laughs> so it was fitting that Paul lives at 222 Craig Park Hill. As he, as he has two eyes, two arms, and two hearts. <laughs> I would like to say a beautiful step looks today. All the effort she put into her special day is definitely paid off, and she does look fabulous. I've known her, Steph now, for about three and a half years. When I first met her, she seemed very quiet and shy. <laughs> <laughs> Until I went on Facebook. <laughs> but as time has gone on, she's come out of her shell, and we've seen the more echo inside of her. She, she plays a massive part in our family. It's easy to see Steph brings in the best of my brother. I'm sure everyone else agrees. Paul and Steph are very similar. They can be quite serious, but they also do love to enjoy themselves. I think this plays a big factor in why they're so happy and content with each other. I can't wait to see their faces tonight. 
But if you discover it was not put together, well, we're all full of problems. <laughs> 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 uh, it gives me great pleasure seeing my brother so happy with Steph, Lucia, and Lacey. From a personal point of view, having Lucia and Lacey as part of my family is the best thing in the world. Never a dull moment when these fair rain. <laughs> I couldn't wish for two better nieces. I do, however, I do, however, have concerns over the amount of women starting to overtake the men in the family. <laughs> the conversation used to be about rugby, football, and beer. Later, the conversation with all three dresses, hair styles, Barbie, and Hello Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> just to try and sport, just to try and put sport on the table, come to four seconds, we stand there as Pepsi, Hannah Montana. <laughs> 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 See my brother now, and pray to be his younger brother. Or I want you to know, whatever I take my head here, because it will be carried. It's not because I'm embarrassed or being nasty, let alone. So here's my brother, a better man than me. But for at least one day, I'll call myself the best man. <laughs> Just before I finish, the hotels asked me to warn everyone for health and safety reasons. Do not stand up on the tables and chairs for my stand on the picture later. <laughs> <laughs> So on that note, before the walk works start, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to invite you all to stand, raise your glasses, and a toast to Stephanie and Paul, the new Mr. and Mrs. Francis. Mr. Francis. Mr. Francis.